Hey YouTube, it's BMC Nut here again today. Um, I think we're day 18 of our New Zealand lockdown, so I'm um, finding that I've got a bit more time on my hands currently to make some YouTube videos. So um, sorry about the one last night, that was all a bit quiet, I was in whisper mode. Um, but uh, yeah, we should be a little bit louder today. What I wanted to show you today is how or why I switched from Atom as a code editor to VS Code. Um, although the learning curve was steep, um, it's just amazing for editing your YAML in Home Assistant. And I'll show you today why everyone should use it. So what we're going to run through is the Home Assistant config add-on for VS Code and what that allows you to do. Um, we'll look at a couple of other add-ons, Atom add Key Map, uh, Indent Rainbow and Rainbow Brackets. Um, we're going to have a look at the command palette to see what you can do with Home Assistant Config. Um, and we'll show you that in action. Um, we'll show you search in VS Code, both a global search and a file search, which is, and show you how to replace um, uh, entities and things in Home Assistant quickly if there's a breaking change. Uh, and lastly, we'll just show you how to manage tabs um, within VS Code. So uh, let's go. Right, so once you've got VS Code open and you open your config directory for Home Assistant, which is what I've got open on my NUT, um, you've got a few tabs down the side here. Explorer, which is all your files, um, search, and then you've got this one here, which is your extensions. So those are the only three that I use. Um, so if we go into extensions first, I've just put Home, search, uh, Home Assistant in as a search in there. So there's a lot of extensions of VS Code. So just search what you're up for and you'll find that. And then you can basically go and install that um, from here. Now what that does is it allows you to connect VS Code directly to your Home Assistant instance. Uh, and you'll need a token to do that. So what we're going to do, you get your token in here in your log on. Uh, hopefully that works for me. There we go, come down here, long lived access token. So you would just go and create a token, give it a name. Uh, it'll pop up a box on the screen. Well, actually we can do that, we'll just call it test. and go okay, and it will generate a token. Now copy that and put that into your, um, your e-wallet or your one password or whatever and hang on to it because you can't get access to that token key again. Um, Home Assistant doesn't allow you to display it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a one-time process. We go and delete that one now. We'll drop back to VS Code. And um, then what you would do is actually click on the gear icon. Now I'm not going to do that because I don't have an easy way to mask my config um, from my YouTube uh, viewers currently until I start getting into editing, which is a bit way down the track. Um, but what that will do when you go into that gear icon uh, is it'll, it will give you the option to put in your Home Assistant URL. So that's just um, where your um, Home Assistant instance resides. Uh, on your local network and that's http colon forward slash and then whatever your IP address is colon 8123. Um, there's another box in there to ignore certificates so you're going to tick that if you're not using SSL and then the last box is where you're going to paste in the long lived access token that you just um, generated. Um, so it's a good idea to call that token you just generated VS code in your name so that you know what it's for. Um, so uh, the other couple of add-ons that I wanted to show you, one, I, as I came from Atom, there's actually an add-on called Atom Key Map. Now what that does is that allows you to use um, some of the shortcut keys or all of the shortcut keys in Atom to control uh, features in VS Code. And I struggled with um, all the shortcuts in VS Code because I was so used to using Atom. So I'll show you that in action so if we go to saving my sprinklers and we've got a bit of code here we don't want to um let's say we don't want to have that condition anymore control forward slash we'll just comment that out so that's an atom shortcut um and control forward slash again we'll uncomment it um if i've made an uh a mistake with an indent 
uh, I can do control um, square brackets close and that will indent it in one and control square brackets or open square brackets that will push it back again um, so that's really handy so control forward slash to comment do it again to uncomment so I actually find that uh, really really handy uh, another couple of extensions which I've found invaluable uh, indent rainbow and that one I've got uh, installed so I go and have a look at that it makes the um, code a lot more readable so if we go and have a look at my code go back to my sprinkler file just close that tab you'll see that there are colored rainbows here now the effect of that will be dependent on the theme that you're running I'm running quite a dark theme so um, it may not be as effective as some lighter themes but um, let me just get rid of that search box it was something I was playing around with before so that's what the rainbow um, indent rainbow does now the other one that I find useful if you search is rainbow brackets and that's that one there that's the icon for that there I've got that installed now all that does I'm um, go back to my sprinkler file is colors the brackets here so if you're looking at a bit of code um, you get nice colored brackets so they're clearly identified so that again that makes code debugging uh, significantly easier now the, the other thing I'll show you quickly with the um, home assistant config uh, add-on is that you can actually do a couple of um, uh, home assistant functions inside uh, VS code which is well cool so if we click on the command palette which is this one here um, so control shift P is the uh, shortcut for that when we search home assistant we can actually check our configuration and restart home assistant right from inside VS code which is way cool and we can reload our automation scripts scripts etc so if I just go uh, check config like that we should see down here shortly a little pop-up there you go result is valid so config is is cool so I can go control shift P um, and uh, I can restart home assistant from inside VS code now if I wanted to do that now before you do that you'll notice that um, uh, I've got a, a little dot here and then there's a one here so that means I have a file that has not been saved um, so you can just use Control S to save that, or if I close it, oh, I don't want to edit that. I choose Don't Save, and then I can come back in and open that up again. So um, nothing here, nothing there means yeah, your file hasn't been edited yet. Right now, the other um, critical function that is why I'm using VS Code, and it makes um, writing YAML so so much easier is the integration directly with home assistant entities inside vs code with that home assistant config add-on um, so i'll give you an example of that a um, couple of things that you can do so i've got an entity id here so i've got a sprinkler system set up and i get it to water the gardens but there's a um, open weather map sensor that i've created that detects whether it, there's any rain today or tomorrow and if it is it actually um, it, it won't run the sprinklers but um, with the entity if you're looking for if we go and do that um, we get rid of that we want to put a sensor in there when I start typing sensor it's because it's connected to home assistant it gives me all of my sensors in a scrollable uh, list which is just freaking awesome um, and as it, it actually filters as you type so as I start typing letters it filters that list um, so I can just click on that and it drops in the uh, the entity ID so that is just freaking amazing um, and yeah why you have to be using VS Code um, let me have a look what else I've got now the other thing you can do is if we go and have a look at my service here um, 
this one here. So in my action, I've got a service to run a script. Now what I can do is I can right click on that service, or you can double click it and hit F12. You can go to definition. Now I'm using packages, so all of my uh, automations, my sensors, my switches, my lights, my um, scripts are all in one file for a particular device. So if I go to definition, it actually wouldn't matter with VS Code. Uh, go to definition will take you to wherever the file is. So if the script for uh, running that garden water timer is located in your scripts folder, it will take you there. Mine happens to be at the bottom of this file. So I go to definition and it actually takes me straight to the, uh, the script, which is freaking awesome. If I go back up there, you can also peek into that. So I can go in here and go peek, peek definition, and that will just pop up a box down the bottom showing me that, um, that script that is being called. Now one last thing here, so I come in here and I just edit this, uh, this service action, and we just redo it again. As you're typing service, it will bring up all of the services that Home Assistant has exposed. Um, so you can start picking those off. And um, yeah, it's pretty damn handy. So um, you can see why I'm using it. Right, <clears throat> now we're going to move into search. So I want to show you global search and um, file search and replace. So over here you've got a search box. Um, let's just close this and choose don't save so we can start again. Uh, sprinklers. And we're going to go to search over here. Now what I'm going to search for is um, maybe I've got a, um, well I know I have, I've actually got a, an automation that looks at whether my alarm panel is, uh, what state my alarm panel in. So is it armed away or is it unset or what state's it in. So if I searched armed away, which is the state in the automations, it searches in real time, which is great. And it gives you how many times that appears in each of the files. So I've got the alarm panel YAML. Um, there's two instances of, of armed away there. But what it's brought back is it's actually brought back um, an instance of armed away inside custom components. So it's not actually one of my, um, my YAML files and I don't want to be editing anything inside of custom components. So what you can do in files to include is just go star dot yaml and it will redefine that search and I recommend leaving that there all the time. Um, so now you've just got your files inside your entire config that have got that instance uh, of armed away included. Now what we can do is if we wanted to change, so this is really handy when uh, Home Assistant come out with uh, breaking changes. So if you need to modify some code, um, what you would do is come in here with replace and let's say I want to change all of my um, automation from armed away state. Say, I don't know, it's, it's changed and it's just called armed. So you would just put that in there and it, it automatically edits all of those files in real time and then all you do on here is click on uh, replace all and it will just go and update all of those files with that new naming convention which is freaking awesome or you can just come down here and click on the one file that might just be this one that you want to change and just click on replace and, and you can do them one at a time so again super handy feature now if we come back to the files, we can also do that inside the file. So I'm, I'm in the file over here, I'll just go control F and that will actually now search inside the open file sprinklers.yaml. So in this one, I've actually got a, um, uh, uh, a reference to water north. Now, just as an exercise, maybe I wanna change all of my um, north references to northern. So let me have a look and search for underscore north. Uh, and again, it searches in real time. It shows me that there are 14 instances of underscore north. And if you scroll down, it's highlighted all of those for you. Freaking awesome. Click on the arrow. 
and in here I'm going to change those to northern like that and then you can replace or you can replace all and replace all bang done updates those files away you go so yeah super simple so loving that feature um, the last thing I'm going to show you is basically tab management. Um, there's a heap of other stuff in VS Code, but these are just the things that I use just about all day, every day. So if you're scrolling through your um, files, you know, click on one, the tab will just change as you click on it. But if you want to copy some code from one file to the other, you need to lock one of those tabs so let's say we want to copy this automation so just double click that tab and that will now lock that tab so when i open up another one it builds it in beside now when i click on other tabs that's now the the hot tab that's switching so i double click the plant sensor and now we've got two fixed tabs and one hot tab so um that's how you manage your tabs in vs code um, that's it for today. If you liked the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up because that helps share it to other people in the IoT Home Assistant community. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.